how do you introduce a fella who lives in one of the most beautiful parts and historic parts of the UK? <laughs> no, seriously, I just think the West Country and where you, you were, you're all from originally hmm. is just the most wonderful part of Britain. So I'm not going to argue with you. No, I know. <laughs> even though I live in Sydney. <laughs> well, no, you can't live in Sydney. You just got to learn to come up the hill and give him the fresh well, air. Well, this, this, this is true. This is true. But uh, John, John's. I was going to say claim to fame, but it was not a claim to fame because he's a very modest man. But he's uh, one of the was previously one of the top scientists in fertility in Australia. Mm. But we're not talking about fertility. We're talking about his passion in life now, and this is a book that he's going to be releasing uh, in December. And John originally was from West Loo, which is in Cornwall, and it's a beautiful book. Well, it's taken a while to put together, like about 40 odd years, because yeah. um, I sort of fell in love with antiquarian prints. Right. Um, and just to put that in perspective, antiquarian prints are those engravings made from a painting of a scene done, I don't know, between about late 1700s and about right. 1850 yep. before photography started yes. coming along yep. um, and what I find fascinating about them is that they're an indication historically of what the place was like before the introduction of photography yep. before the introduction of, of mass travel yep. and actually before the introduction of, of lots of books because a people weren't that literate necessarily yep. And secondarily, the only people who had books were the rich aristocracy who could afford the yeah. uh, so, the leather band yeah. tomes that so, were being so produced. So Gutenberg took it from being done by a monk, correct? To where it was a mass print or Absolutely. sort of mass print, and then where the period yeah. you're talking about then took the to the general people. It did, and the you frequently find the word picturesque in there. yes, yes, <laughs> picturesque well, sold books in the early eighteen hundreds. Yeah, well. <laughs> what, I mean, what you say is, is dead right because today, and it's just so easy to assume how things were. Well, you, exactly. I mean, in the early 1800s, you've got to remember that Britain was at war with France. Yeah. Therefore, people weren't travelling to the continent. Mm. So they started looking locally. And that's when all these travel books, espousing how lovely England might be, yes. really began. Yeah. So... They started really with the large country houses, yeah. mostly because they, they were commissioned by the people who lived in the country houses. Yes. But slowly the romanticism started and yeah. the artists got out there, Turner and Prout and everybody like that, and they started drawing the lesser side of things, right. old mills. Then Robbie Burns got the only so they went yeah, to Scotland. For he went, a they went all over the place, yeah. these people. You didn't think they travelled too much, but they travelled everywhere. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to think of the name of the magazine that used to be big, big A5, or we'd call A5. Well, it was Illustrated London News. That's it. That was the one yeah. that had the lovely graphic uh, masthead on it. And that started about 1842 or so. Yeah. And the Gentleman's Magazine also was around that sort of time. Right. And that's where these prints were. But those magazines, you know what magazine is? It's French. All right. It's French for magazine, which means a store so, of okay, everything. Right. Well, yeah, I've uh, learned something. Yeah, another bit of useless trivia. Um, never, ne for an auctioneer, trivia is never useless. So you can always use it. Well, you know, we've, we've got to talk about infertility. Mm. You know what a spermatologist is? Like who looks at sperm? No, somebody who's interested in trivia. And it took me to the National Library in Canberra and the 56 versions of the Oxford English Dictionary to actually find it. <laughs> I was just thinking the next time I'm going to function and someone says, what are you? And I was having a spermatologist. spermatologist. I love trivia. Ah, there, there we go. go. And, then, yeah. and they'll well, like it. I they? thought you were going to say something to do with whales. No, anyway, no, 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 no. Because this could be a five-hour interview on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you back for another one later on because you live in Coyote now, don't you? We, we, we visit we, Kiama very frequently. Well, all you got to do is a dog leg out of Sydney Absolutely. and come up here. So, look, John, this is a fascinating. This could this could <laughs> run for three hours. So, look, would you would you come back on on the show? Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it when it's actually published, and then we can look at well, it in December, detail, isn't it? No, it might be before then. Okay, depends how quick. Well, people you come back on, and we'll we'll give this a burst. That's the uh, that's the initial potential cover. Pot pot oh, pot <laughs> potential cover. Just a beautiful book, and John, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you, mate.
Thank you fantastic. Very much. Lovely to be well, here. there we are, folks. <laughs> um, yeah, what a day. Thanks for being with us. Have a great day and remember, as long as you've got a pulse, you have one. See ya.